Hello everyone and welcome to From the Heart Friday, session 156 with me, Jessica Brigden of Just Be Creative Cardiology. Hello, hello, happy Friday to you. I'm excited to be here. The weather has turned cold. Oh my goodness, we went from nice mid 70s to high 40s, <laughs> mid 50s. Oh my goodness, it's so chilly. So I have pulled out my cozy flannel shirt. Um, it is the closest thing that I have to our Gingham Cottage Designer Series paper. I realize this is not Gingham, it's plaid, but you know how I like to coordinate with my projects. And we're going to be using the Apple Harvest bundle again today. I intended to have a video um, to go with the blog post that I shared yesterday with the fun book binding um, chalkboard technique card. And I did not get that video done. So I'm going to share that project with you today along with a, an extra little <laughs> project I'm casing from the catalog. So two ways to use the Apple Harvest bundle. And since I don't really own a lot of red, I'm more of a pink girl. Um, and of course, real red is the color I'm using for the apples. So I just went with the black and white plaid. There's a little bit of um, kind of balmy blue in there. So we're going to pretend this matches today. <laughs> Hi, Diana. Welcome. You're up north. It must be chilly where you are, too. I might have to plug in the space heater. Whew. Because I refuse. We refuse to turn on the furnace for at least another few weeks. <laughs> we're, no, we're New Yorkers. We got to tough it out. <laughs> Aw. All right. So I hope everything is going well with all of you. Please let me know when you're here. Leave me a comment. I hope you're going to enjoy this technique. Like I said, we are using the Apple Harvest bundle because, of course, here late September, going into October, it is apple season. We have apple cider and apple pie and apple cake and all apple picking, all of those fun apple themed things on the mind. And so this apple harvest bundle is, the stamp set itself is gorgeous and the dies are available through the end of the month here, only till September 30th um, as part of the Perfect Partners promotion. So if you purchase the dies, the if you do it as a bundle, the dies to go along with a stamp set here um, by September 30th, then you actually save $6 on the dies. It's a 10% it's a savings, which works out to be $6 um, off the price of the dies, which is pretty cool. So you can get the whole bundle for $53. And um, it's nice because otherwise, once October 1st hits, you're only going to be able to get the stamps. You will not be able to get those dies. All right. Oh, Diana says they have a fire going. Ooh, yes. Fire in the in the wood stove sounds good. <laughs> we might we do have a fireplace. Um it's not wood burning, but it is gas. But um that's a good idea. We might have to turn on the fireplace. <laughs> Make it nice and cozy in here. Hi Alice. Welcome, welcome. Hope you are warm and cozy. We are going to be playing with the Apple Harvest bundle and I'm going to flip the camera so we can get started. Okay, so I've got a, a double technique card for you today. This is the book binding fold. All right, so if you haven't tried that before, we're doing a book binding fold, and we're also doing a second take on the chalkboard technique. Hi, Janelle, welcome. All right, so we're just getting started here. Um, we're gonna be using a couple cards using the Apple Harvest. Again, the bundle available here just through the end of the month. All right, so what we are going to do to get started is we are starting with some crumb cake cardstock. This is a half sheet, but again, I've cut it on the long side here. So it is four and a quarter by 11. And then we're gonna go ahead and fold that in half. All right, so you're gonna fold and score it here at the five and a half inch mark. Now to create our book binding, because otherwise this is just a, a long card, to get the book binding, we are going to score it again. So I'm going to bring in my trimmer, make sure you get that cutting blade out of the way. We just want to score. We don't want to cut anything. 
All right, so what you can do, if you bring your fold line here, we're gonna place the fold at one and a quarter. Okay, so make sure we're one and a quarter there. You can see the line comes down here um, below as well. And we're gonna score it there at one and a quarter. All right, so if you were just scoring this uh, without folding it first, you would come in here, you would go to five and a half, there's your fold line, and then you would move it over. You'd have to extend your, your arm just a little bit. So you're scoring at five and a half, and then six and a quarter. Okay, so five and a half, and then six and quarter. Yeah, so we're just doing this front side. So we have a one and a quarter inch space right there. This is going to be our book binding. All right, and then we'll have our front flap here. Okay, so what we're going to do now is put all of the, the pretty little pieces together on this, and then we'll add in our chalkboard technique to this. So our next piece here, we need some real red cardstock. This is a four by four square, and we're going to adhere this right to the front. Okay. So this is going towards that on that that right panel here. So your your binding is here on the left. Okay? So 4 by 4 panel of real red. Then we also need a 1 yes, 1 by 4. Yes, 1 by 4 panel of real red to go here on our binding. Okay, and then, so this is pretty simple so far. We've got a crumb cake card base. We've scored it, oh, we make sure we have a one and a quarter inch seam here. All right, then a four by four piece of red and a one by four piece of red. We're going to enhance our binding with some of that Gingham Cottage designer series paper, also in real red. And this is a three quarter inch by three and three quarter inch piece. This is going to glue right on top. Now, if you're following along, feel free to write down these measurements. I also have these measurements listed on my blog post at Just Be Creative Cardiology. I have listed a link directly to the post um, in the video description here. So be sure to check out my blog got a few extra photos and um, of course the measurements listed there as well. All right, so now our decoration for this next panel, we have a three and three quarter inch, three and three quarter by three and three quarter inch square of basic black. All right, so you can tell this is going to be our chalkboard. It's already taking shape. We are going to use this time the Time Worn Type 3D Embossing Folder. And I went with this because it does have some print on it as well as just kind of, oh, I don't know, like murky areas, you could say, which is going to really help us achieve that chalkboard look. Um, so we're going to be embossing this first. And then we're gonna come in with our white craft ink. So that's where it's similar, um, is that white craft ink is what creates that chalkboard effect. So before you glue that down, all right, come in here. And if you wanna make sure your print and everything lines up just so, there is a line across the front of your embossing folder. You can line your cardstock up right against that. Okay. So this is a 3D embossing folder, which means with your Stampin' Cotton embossed, you're gonna use your base, all right? Your base without the, the tab, without the shim, is just base, your folder with the cardstock, and then your gray specialty plate, okay? So you don't have any of your other plates, it's just your base with the folder, with the paper, and then your gray specialty plate, okay? If you guys have, ever, have any questions about that, let me know, because if you try to shove this through the other way, it's gonna, it's gonna be too thick, um, and it's not gonna work. So we run that through the folder and then we get this really cool 
technique, but of course, um, black there, it's hard to see. So we are going to chalk it up a little bit here. So bring in a little bit of scrap to protect your work surface. Oh, good. Janelle, you've tried the book binding fold. That's awesome. She says it's one of her favorites. Woohoo! All right. All right. So we got our sponge dauber here, our white craft ink. So one thing you can do first, because if you have been um, playing with this a little bit, um, it's actually best if your dauber is a little bit dry. You don't want a lot of ink because you want to be able to kind of brush this across and create the look of chalk dust. You don't want it to be too thick because you really don't want to have too many of those. Um, you don't want circle marks on here. You want to use the edge and just kind of rub this across gently. And the cool thing with it being embossed is that for the most part, the ink sticks to that raised embossed area. All right, so you can add uh, just a little, you can add a lot. All right, just keep going through here. I'm just moving left to right on here. If you want, you can go ahead and, and ink up your edges a little bit more. Pretend the, uh, the chalk settled there at the edge of the board. one thing about um, those chalk and the erasers, they never truly get the board completely clean and you always have this residual dust on there. All right, so this is a fun, fun technique. Again, I, I had previously used the white craft ink and my dauber, I did a little test here, was um, still pretty inky. So I ended up not re-inking and I just went with, with already on here. So when you get ready to do this, grab your dauber, test it out. Um, if you're using a new dauber, then just add, you know, lightly ink it up. You can even kind of tap it off a little bit because you don't want it too thick. I mean, that's great if you're um, heat embossing with some powder, but for this technique, you just want a light brush across it. So, so for those of you who are just joining us, we use the time-worn type embossing folder for this. Again, a great folder for this project because it already has some of that, um, that print on there. So you can, you can kind of make out a, a few words here and there. I don't know that it actually says anything truly uh, legible. It's just kind of some random words on there along with some of these blotchy spots, which it's kind of cool because it works really well with that chalk effect. Okay, so we don't have to ink because we only used just a little bit on there. Um, that's going to dry pretty quick. You're not going to worry about it smudging onto anything. So you do not need to heat set this. Um, you should be good to go. All right, again, this is three and three quarters by three and three quarters. And this is going to go right here on the front of our card to create our chalkboard. All right, welcome everyone. Hi Beth, glad to have you. Hi Judy, hello, hello. Let me know where you guys are from. I recognize some of the names, but um, don't have everybody's location down yet. All right, so it is taking shape here, pretty cool. All right, I wanna come in and add a little bit of ribbon and then we're going to add in our, our apples and our sentiment. So this is the Real Red Ruffled Ribbon. I thought it was pretty. It's got that nice little um, that nice little ruffle on the edge. And we're not gonna do anything fancy, but I am gonna come in here and wrap this around. Give yourself enough length. Okay, so keep your, keep your ribbon straight. There we go, get all that out of the way. All right, so make sure your ends are straight and we're just gonna tie a knot on here. Grab that, hold it tight. All right, we're gonna tie a knot right in the center. Work that through, come on here, there we go. Okay, 
looks great. We're going to trim this off. That's a nice little feminine touch there with that little bit of ruffle on it. Okay, so now we've got our ribbon in place where we want it. We're going to open this back up. Oh, I did get twisted back there. Oh, well. All right, so this next step, you could use your stamp and seal and go ahead and, and seal on either side of the ribbon. Um, if you really want a good solid hold for this, because this is definitely a card that you're going to be kind of playing with and opening, opening up and checking out that book binding fold. I'm going to use the tear and tape, okay? I'm going to line this up and I'm going to do one length of tear and tape on each side of my ribbon right along my fold and my score line here. Okay, so you don't need a lot, just, just a little there. And then, there we go. Peel off the paper so that you've got your adhesive layer there, okay? We're going to go ahead and just fold this. Again, make sure your ribbon's good. All right, and press it firmly. There you go. Now you've got your, your binding in place, okay? And then you've got your fun fold here, and then you'll write on the inside. Okay, so that created our book binding. All right. All right, now we're going to do the apple for the teacher here. All right, so... Get a scrap of some basic white. We need our beautiful apple. Of course, a little little flower there too would be perfect. Oh, hi Beth, you are Southern. All right, <laughs> Southern Illinois, maybe. <laughs> perfect, all right. Well, I hope the weather is nice where you are. It is beautiful here in New York today, um, but just a little chilly, which I guess, that is a good way to welcome in fall, since yesterday was officially the first day of fall. And I admit, I do like sweater weather. Um, so it is kind of nice to have, <laughs> have cooler temperatures. Also nice to be able to uh, run the oven again. Um, <laughs> and it doesn't make the house quite so hot. All right, so I have used the memento tuxedo black ink here so that we can um, color with our stamp and blends we are going to run these through all right our cut and emboss i'm going to use the dies for this so like i said the great die set here there's 25 dies in total including the ones that cut out each of the stamped images you get a, a nice little label here lots of leaves um, and embossed flowers, small and large, a cool little scalloped edge here, and a branch. So in this case, I'm going to be using the single apple die. And one of the flowers, actually two flowers in here, which is nice, so you can cut multiples. All right, so we're gonna line these up on here. All right, perfect. So we'll run those through our cotton emboss machine. Snap, crackle, pop there, and here we go. All right, beautiful. So again, I'm gonna bring in that scrap paper because I'm gonna color with blends and I don't want it to bleed through my work surface. All right, my go-to color here for the apples this year, a real red, old olive, soft suede, and some petal, petal pink that I'm using for the flowers. Okay, or in the fleshy part of the apple if you're using the, um, the opal apple image there. Okay, so we're gonna come in here again. Let's do our stem. I've got soft suede for our little stem in here. That was easy. <laughs> Quick and easy. Okay, let's come in here with our dark old olive. Again, I'm using the pointy, the bold tip first to go through and highlight all the bold areas, the veining in the leaves, the outside edge there. Okay, good to 
go come in with our light old olive blend that a little bit for a little bit of two-tone color here now i will admit old olive blends are probably my most go-to green all right of the stampin up blends it's just the perfect shade all right we're gonna do the same thing here with our real red come in with the dark real red to highlight your outside edge and your your shading all right you can come in a little bit okay and then we're going to use the light real red i am going to come in kind of work my way around the leaf here and then we'll use our brush tip all right so we can just do some good quick coloring use your circular motion and just brush that in again you're using the side of your marker you're not point holding it on the tip you're just brushing on the color here okay beautiful so we're going to pop this on our card with a couple of dimensionals and I think this looks perfect right down here at the edge of the board isn't that cute so fun all right so with our little little flower here we are going to use the the dark petal pink okay we'll come in color around our flower petals and the center and then we'll use our light with the brush tip brush that all in there if you want it to be a little little more pinky go ahead use your light real red you can even add just a just a little bit extra with that if you actually prefer that go ahead and use that light and and trace around your petals a little bit more. It's up to you whether you want a, just a truly pink flower or if you like that touch of red on there too. All right, this one is going to get a dimensional as well, but we're not gonna pop it on quite yet. We are going to bring in a little piece of crumb cake. So this is three quarters of an inch, 0.75 by two and a half. And it is the perfect width for our thanks for your kindness sentiment. So this would make a great teacher appreciation card. Love that. Okay. And so we're going to stamp that right in the center. Oh, that came out beautiful. But if you happen to stamp it and it smudges or you wiggle it or something, paper has two sides. So you always get a second chance there. <laughs> All right, thankfully we we didn't need it, but we're going to put a couple of dimensionals on here. This is going to overlap our apple just a little bit. Okay, and then we'll put our flower, whoops, come on, dimensional. The flower right on top as the perfect finishing touch. And there you have it. So we have our book binding fold, okay, combined with our chalkboard technique. This time we used an embossed, an embossing folder to create that texture and brushed our ink on top. So different take on that. Another way to do, do the chalkboard technique, you could use an embossing folder that you have, which is fun, okay. So that is card number one. And again, I have um, some additional pictures and the measurements on my blog post at justbecreativecardiology.com. The links are here below. All right, so for our second project today, we're going to keep things simple and we're actually going to case the catalog. I'm gonna do this fun little card here. Uh, case can mean a couple different things, copy and share everything can also mean copy and selectively edit. So in this case, I'm going to copy essentially the elements of the card, but I'm changing up 
the colors because I want to go real red and keep with our, our color theme here. So instead of the So Saffron, we're going to use a card base of real red. Okay, so this is five and a half by eight and a half. All right, I was just hearing some weird noises outside my, my craft room. I, I've got a window right here and um, I couldn't figure out. It sounded like somebody was knocking, which is kind of weird. And I just looked out and we've got um, some little woodpeckers that are right here in the trees outside. So I have a feeling that the little woodpecker was must have been knocking on um, the siding outside our house. That is what was making all those weird noises. There you go. Joys of living in the country. <laughs> Hello, Chris. Oh, from Southwest Ontario. So you are just to the north of us. Um, I'm in central New York which um, if you were to draw a line from Niagara Falls, straight down um, about three hours from the Canadian border in Niagara Falls. So nice, welcome, welcome. Yes, I love this car. I am in love with this um, Apple Harvest stamp set from the mini catalog and I was elated when Stampin' Up! introduced um, the coordinating set of dies for this. So I encourage everybody, if you haven't, um, gotten the bundle already, or if you already have the stamp set, make sure you get the dies here before the end of the month because that is so much fun. Okay, so we're using a real red card base for our next project. I am keeping with our gingham, gingham cottage. I actually, I love this paper. It's, it's kind of interesting because when I first looked at it here in the mini catalog on page 59, I just saw all those bold colors and all of like the gingham and it really didn't do anything for me. So I ordered it anyways to push myself outside my comfort zone and oh my goodness, I love it because with it being so neutral, you really can use it as any background and any combination of colors because you've got black and white, you can put that with any color. Um, you get not only the, the bright, the bold, larger gingham squares, but then you get the smaller ones as well. And that's for each color. So I actually really enjoy this paper pack and it is a 48 sheet stack. All right, they're 12 by 12. So it is a massive paper pack. All right, so I'm using a little bit of the, um, the real red here and I'm gonna use the smaller gingham. All right, and I've got, I've got like a one and a half by four and a half inch scrap here that um, I had just like a leftover piece from working and cutting some of the other elements. And so I just went with one and a half by four and a half. And we're going to kind of, Janelle, I know this is gonna bug you, but we're going to put this on crooked, okay? I'm doing it on purpose. <laughs> We're putting that on there at an angle. Then we are going to bring in a layer of crumb cake. All right, this is three, three by four and a quarter. Okay, so it's, so I made sure that gingham was four and a half. It's a little bit longer. It's gonna peek out the edges here. This is three by four and a quarter. This is going to go on straight. So if you are, um, type A and you like everything perpendicular, then um, you'll be good to go with this. Okay, I'm looking for that scrap piece I had. I'm going to set this aside. We're going to do some stamping on our crumb cake piece. I'm going to clean the black ink off of my apple right now so that I can stamp with crumb cake. I just want a little bit. You could also use Versamark. For this to create a um a tone on tone so let me grab my so whichever you have crumb cake or or versa mark works fine okay and we're just going to stamp off here and kind of come in and create our own little little background paper okay Let's see here. 
Got a little leaf there at the bottom. Okay, I like that. It's cute. So we've got our own little apple paper going on. And then we'll adhere this to our card base. This one is pretty clean and simple. No ribbon, no, no frill or fluff. All right, we're going to stick this on here. I'm going even from the bottom and the side here. Kind of match that up. Our gingham paper just kind of sticks out the side. Hi, Janie. Welcome. All right, let's clean our apple again so that we can get that crumb cake ink on there. But I'm going to come back in with the, um, the Memento Black. And we are going to use a stitched circle here. I use the Stylish Shapes dies and I use number, this is the second largest, okay? The nice thing with the dies um, and the, the print in the catalogs is that the stamps are usually published at full size. So you can bring your die in and set it right over top of the, um, the catalog image and then make sure you've got the right one there. So I ran some basic white through with our stylish shapes to get a stitched circle. We're going to stamp our apple onto the circle here. So just make sure we've got good coverage. All right, we're gonna do this right in the center. Beautiful. All right, I'm gonna just use it. Okay, I hope you still have your blends handy same colors. I'm not, um, let's say I don't feel real creative with, I like my traditional red apple. I just, I just do. Although, I mean, I do love a good Granny Smith with, you know, a nice good green apple. But, um, for some reason when I am coloring here, I just love the look of a nice, beautiful red red apple and so that is what I have been <laughs> that's just my go-to combination here is the real red the old olive and um and the soft suede so I just I love that combo so much I know in the catalog they they did um kind of this yellow leaf combination I don't know that I don't that's a little weird to me because when we usually we see yellow leaves, it means there's been too much rain, <laughs> which actually is what happened here in the spring. Apparently the weather was too weird. And so it is not a good apple harvest season this year. Uh, we have a small orchard. We've got a combination of, um, we do have some red delicious, which are primarily these nice little, um, firm red apples. We also have, we do have some Granny Smiths, like the larger, um, call those like the, the baking apples. And then we do have, uh, the majority are kind of a, um, a blend of, um, like the Macintosh, like the smaller, crisper apples, like the Macintosh and the Cortlands. Um, those are like New York Portland's are a New York blend, but at this point, um, the trees in our orchard have kind of mixed. I don't, I guess that's a thing. They kind of, um, have blended together. So all of our apples are kind of this unique, um, cross blend. So, so even though they like may have originally started out as a particular brand, they, um, they're now kind of this all blend. So they're mostly red, a little bit of green on them. But um, for the most part, all of our apples are red. <laughs> so that's my little uh, apple story there. All right, let's go with center on this. So find your center, kind of pull it, pull it down. Okay. Uh, Janelle says she loves a yummy Granny Smith apple. Yes. Uh, and hi, Gladdy. Yeah, so those, um, the larger, the green pie ones, even bigger than Granny Smith. I don't know what they're called. Um, they can be huge, like really like, and, um, those are good. If you, um, 
do the core out and then you can stuff them with brown sugar and butter and all of that stuff and do um, a baked apple. That's kind of a fun, fun thing to try there. <laughs> okay, so we need a sentiment for this and I'm going to keep with my case of the catalog here and I did do some old olive. All right, again, this is three quarters of an inch by two and a half. And we're going to use that same. I still have my thanks sentiment inked up here. I'm going to stamp this a little more towards the edge, though. So whether you go left or right, it's up to you. Um, and then we'll use our snips just to trim off the excess. Now, I'm not much of a straight cutter. That's why I use a trimmer. But if I can put this in here with my snips and do one fell swoop, boop then that's pretty straight. <laughs> it's not too bad. All right, again, come in with a dimensional or two. Dimensionals make me happy, so go ahead and uh, use a couple on there. All right, I've got a little smudge foo -foo spot on there. <laughs> so I'm gonna cover that up with my sentiment, and then that's just perfect. So... <laughs> There you go. Sometimes you can use your sentiment to hide your smudge. All right. And there we have clean and simple, quick case of the catalog here. What do you guys think? Does it look pretty close? I have to admit, I think I like mine better. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> but if you do any fun color combinations, if you get brave to try um, a combination besides the red, the olive, and the, um, the crumb cake here, let me know. I'd love to see it. Okay. <laughs> but I hope you guys have enjoyed today's projects and I hope you'll give this book binding fold a try. Okay. So it's, it's really not difficult. You're starting out with your half sheet of cardstock. It's just, just cut the skinny ways instead. All right. We added an extra little fold there to create our, our binding. And then we used our time worn type embossing folder brushed on some white craft ink to give it that chalkboard look and there we have it two beautiful apple harvest cards and um yeah love it oh thank you guys so so much oh good diana says she agrees and loves my version <laughs> thank you <laughs> yes thank you chris oh so glad you all enjoy it if you're watching the replay on youtube or wherever you are, make sure you give me that thumbs up, like, share, all that good stuff. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Love that. That really helps me out. And um, again, if you want to um, check out the measurements for the bookbinding card, be sure to visit my blog at justbecreativecardiology.com. Again, the links for all of these things are in the video description. And I hope you'll check them out. Thanks so much. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>